Hey, this is Man-Made Mead. Today we are talking about, um, in this video, about the difference between primary and secondary fermentation. There's a huge difference, and when you're making a mead, you need to know that difference to see how you're gonna use the information. So, um, and I have some notes here, so I'll be reading off them. I'll include the notes down in the description. There'll be a link to them, so you can follow along if you're a visual person like myself, and just kind of read. I have gone through and, and synopsized a lot of information I've read, and then just taken my own experience and tried to put it into words as well. So uh, I by no means am, am the professional at mead making, so please don't assume that I am. However, um, I do believe that I've figured out quite a bit of stuff. So um, there are multiple stages in the mead making process and all very important the primary stage is when the bulk of your fermentation is happening. So this happens within the first one to 60 days generally. Some might go faster. Primary fermentation could be two weeks, could be Four weeks, maybe eight weeks, just depends on how your yeast is kind of cooperating with the actual, um, with the actual must. And if you have a lower gravity, um, a lower gravity must and a fast moving yeast, you're gonna, they're gonna go through the gravity real fast and the uh, primary fermentation might not last as long, which is fine. Um, so the thing is you have to watch the, your airlock to know when like primary fermentation is done. Primary fermentation, like I said, is one to 60 days. Um, and a lot of people will use the rule of thumb that when you're bubbling in your airlock is slowed down to maybe a bubble every three to 10 minutes or completely stopped, then that fermentation has subsided and has stopped. And you can then take it and go into either two options. You can take it and put in the secondary. So a lot of people, or secondary or racking. In the primary stage, some people will choose to go ahead and put um, we'll just do the honey, water, and the yeast, and that's great. That's just like your traditional mead, and that's awesome. Some people will start to put in their uh, fruits or other ingredients, and that's great too. You can put those in the primary. That's just depending on what you like and what you want to do. Um, if you go into the secondary, what I do oftentimes is I will do just like a traditional mead for the first primary part, and then in the secondary fermentation is when I'll start to add in my um, fruits and my additional ingredients. And that's just, I feel like there's a safeguard that happens with the alcohol content that keeps the bacteria from um, hurting the mead ultimately. And bacteria and yeast um, can really fight each other and oftentimes bacteria wins depending on the yeast. But if you put it in the secondary fermentation, the bacteria have a harder time existing in that alcohol content. Now granted, it's not a 40 to 80% alcohol content, but it's something where 15% might make a difference against the bacteria. So um, when you're going into secondary fermentation is simply um, the act of restarting fermentation. Now you can do that by a, a couple ways. Secondary, if you were to add more honey on top of your must, on top of your mead, then you might kickstart the fermentation again if there are still some yeast that are alive. And oftentimes there are a few yeast and they can repopulate and everything because they have nutrients and they have all this stuff again. Um, or you can kickstart it by adding like your other ingredients. So those yeasts might feed on the apples you put in or the pears or the whatever things. They might uh, like those and that kickstart their fermentation again. So secondary fermentation is simply when the fermentation is still going, but the primary stage is ended. So oftentimes between primary and secondary, there's a racking. So imagine um, there's normally a racking between these things. So you're racking it into a different um, a container. So now you don't have to go into secondary fermentation from prim primary. You can easily go into just the first racking stage, meaning from primary, if you were just doing your traditional mead and you have no reason to actually um, go through and uh, like yeah, add your extra ingredients, if you're just doing your traditional mead, you can put it into the racking stage, which means you just go ahead and rack it into a new container and without adding more ingredient, ingredients or nutrient or anything, the uh, fermentation might still happen slightly, might still be a little bit, but it will be a lower amount and ultimately kind of go down. Um, so the one way you can check if your uh, primary fermentation has it kind of happened is most meads will level out at 1.00 oftentimes. So let's say that you make your mead, you use three pounds of honey, use a gallon of water and your yeast and your must gravity, excuse me, is 1.12 at the start. 
you can measure that when you get to the um, actual uh, end of the primary and see if it has landed on 1.00. And oftentimes, when it has, that means that the fermentation has run its course. Now, there's still going to be some small fermentation, and that's just how it is, but the bulk of the fermentation, of primary fermentation, has happened. When you add your secondary ingredients into the secondary fermentation, you automatically can raise the gravity up again, and then that kind of gives it more reason to go down. Now, um, in a previous video, I talked about uh, yeast only hitting a certain alcohol content. They can hit the wall. I imagine the alcohol content as a wall. If you have a 14% and you put in uh, your gravity is, let's say, 1.15, which I believe is about 16 to 17% uh, alcohol volume, they're going to stop at 14%, meaning your gravity will not be 1.00. Your gravity is going to probably stop at about 1.03. And that's just how it works. So that's where you have to pick your yeast and do those things appropriately. It's like a giant um, science experience, experiment. experiment. Um, so uh, let's see, back to what we're saying. Primary, first part of your uh, fermentation. Secondary, where you can add things or you can go straight into the racking stages. When you are actually racking things, you don't want to rack um, every day. So what you want to do is you want to rack things over to get sediment. You, when you're racking, there's going to be a bottom layer of sediment if you've let it set for long enough. Don't get that sediment into your next portion. You're going to have to lose a little mead. That's just kind of how it works. But you don't want to get sediment like dead yeast or maybe your apples um, kind of shaved off or whatever, something. That stuff doesn't need to go in your mead. It will make it harder to clear your mead. If you're also racking every day, you're not letting that sediment settle down. So rack every couple weeks, maybe, uh, or even longer, just depends. But you want a clear mead that uh, will last longer, look nicer, all those things, just like that. Um, so the last thing to note about uh, the difference between primary and secondary fermentation is that you can have mixed results when including varying ingredients. The big de debate between people on whether or not to include fruits in, in uh, ingredients in your primary fermentation or secondary fermentation is something that's just ongoing. It's a, it's a method, you know, everyone has a different method for how they want to make things and that's fine. You know, no one's, um, I can't say that anyone's wrong or right because the methods can work and do work. Um, I myself have had better luck putting my extra like fruits and extra ingredients into the secondary fermentation because oftentimes you can leave them in for a little bit longer in for and not have to worry about the actual um, any problems with uh, rotting or bacteria things like that. Um, my mellow mill, my mellow mill meads have done better when I put them in secondary. Um, you know that's something that I've just noticed. Now I have done a few that are in primary, and uh, the flavor differences. There are some flavor differences. Sometimes when you put things in primary fermentation. What you're doing is um, allowing the aromas of your fruit and stuff to go out of the airlock. And a lot of flavors, if you think about it, you know, when you hold your nose and you eat some food, you can't really taste things. So a lot of flavor comes from the aroma. So if you don't have a lot of aroma, you're not going to have a lot of flavor. It's kind of a back and forth. So that's why I prefer to put um, when the bulk of the fermentation has not happened, you know, when you're fermenting a lot, you're losing those aromas out of the airlock. But when the fermentation is low, you lose less of the aroma. So that's something that I've, I've kind of experienced and figured out um, over time. So uh, two, quick 10 second review. Primary, first uh, two to eight weeks of fermentation. Secondary, you can go in the secondary by racking and then adding new ingredients and restarting the fermentation. Or you can go straight from primary to the racking stages by just uh, leaving the meat as it is and racking it into something. So knowing the difference between the two, try things. I absolutely encourage you to just give it a shot. Um, ultimately, you're going to have varied results. You might have the best mead by putting all of your fruits in the primary stage. You might have uh, better luck in the secondary. You might, whatever your case is, give things a shot. Um, go with what people say, but also try things on your own because I think that's experimental um, things work well for me at least. So uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave 
um, them in the comments. And uh, I, like I said, I will put all this information in the description somehow, so you can read along. Um, and you know, when I've talked so much, uh, I know it gets words can be kind of crazy, and it feels like I've said a million things. So. Um, read the notes, leave comments, leave a like, leave something. If you have any questions, um, I will gladly answer the best I can, or somebody who's way smarter than me might answer it way better. Um, so thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.